Spartan of Band Band 3 is out, and some people are saying it's actually really good. So let's talk about that. <laughs> So I just want to preface this by saying that I don't know too much about the second game. The first game just had me completely uninterested, and from the bits I do know about the second game, it's not that great either. That's why when I heard that the third game was actually pretty good, my curiosity was piqued, and I decided to check it out to see if it was true. Did they actually sit down and make a good game? Did they flesh out the gameplay and make it more interesting? Well... <laughs> Let's start off with talking about the segments that I did like, and then go into the problems I had with those still, and then the rest of the game. There's this part where you have to inject a female Nab-Nab, nab with fluids that the other creatures were injected with to, like, come alive, basically. So you're basically creating another one of these monsters to hopefully cheer up Nab-Nab so he won't be so lonely. Then, another thing that I liked was the boss fight with the turtle chameleon chimera. It was actually pretty cool, and the fight was... okay. Uh, the Jumbo Josh dollhouse part, where you have to try to maneuver around this area trying to escape, but when Jumbo Josh comes to check on you, everything has to be the same place that it was when he last left, or you'll get caught. It's kind of like a game of statues, or red light, green light, but with an extra rule. And you have to get these orange cubes to be able to access different rooms so you can get to the final room to get the keycard without getting caught so you can escape. I like this one. I think it's probably the best one. But I do have another one I want to talk about. And that's the Opila race segment. I'm not sure what you'd really call it because it doesn't really feel like a race because you're not racing against Opelia. You're just working with her to try to escape from Bam Bam. So I guess it's a race, but I don't know. But I think it was fun. Uh, basically, you're riding on the back of a blue Opelia. I think her name was Tarta? And you have to work together to get through a set of doors, and sometimes Opelia has to get to the door first, and sometimes you have to get to the door first, depending on what color the light is. It's kind of cute, and I think that segment definitely could be fun. But with these positives come negatives. The part with Nab Nablina is, like, Everything else in Ban Ban, needlessly padded. To do this part, you have to mix some liquids together that it tells you to do to give Nab Nab a girlfriend. When you're mixing the liquids together, there's a bunch of lights that will also change color and you have to change them back to green. And there's a random button that will activate that you have to press with your droid. This honestly wouldn't be too bad if you didn't have to do it six times in a row because it just feels really long and drawn out with just the menial little tasks that you have to do over and over and over again. You can actually skip this by mixing the first color you're told to do six times and injecting her, and then, like, you immediately beat the stage. This will probably be patched later, but as of recording this, you could just skip that part. <laughs> After this, she goes to meet up with Nab Nab, they do a little mating dance, then they go off screen, and she kills him. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> And, uh, that was weird. I I guess you don't have to worry about him now, but there's nothing saying that Nab Nablina isn't going to be a threat like him, so I... I don't know. Then the boss fight with the Termelian, as I will be calling it. Uh, like I said, the boss fight itself was okay. The hitbox is a little jank from what I've seen, with sometimes you'll be hit by an attack that really shouldn't have hit you because you were pretty far from it. And the chameleon's tongue, I think, is supposed to get wider every time you damage it. So it makes it so you can't be on the middle platform at all. But it kind of just... If you're on the middle platform at all, even from the beginning, it kills you. That could be a me thing, but it looked like it was getting wider and like that was supposed to be a mechanic. But I could be completely wrong on that. Maybe it's always supposed to kill you if you're in the middle platform. Boss fight itself, this whole segment, isn't that bad. It's more so the segment leading up to it. Because to get up to it, you have to go through like 10 different doors down a straight hallway to get to it. And I kind of get it. It's supposed to be you're going to a more dangerous area, so it's secured. 
but it takes so long for all the doors to open. It's pretty annoying. It's just a really long hallway. I think they could get the message across by cutting out like three or four of the doors. It, I don't think it would be as bad. Or maybe speeding up the time it takes to open the door? I don't know. Jumbo Josh's dollhouse is the most solid one here in my opinion. You have to do some puzzles and parkour to be able to get a key card while on a timer. And Nap Nap's decomposing body is sitting there with you. The timer seems to be pretty fair from what I've seen, giving you time to set things back up to how they were before and sitting back down. If you're bad at parkour, then this will probably be difficult for you and kind of frustrating. But it didn't seem like the parkour was too strenuous, so I think it's okay. My issue mostly comes with it that when you get to the final room to get the key card, you have to stack up the blocks again and then jump and try to hit a keypad that's in this little cubby hole at the top of the wall. And it's just, it seems really dumb and pointless. I don't know why they would do that. It kind of makes it seem like they're trying to add difficulty to something that wasn't that difficult. And in doing so, it makes it more infuriating than difficult. So I think that was just a bad idea. I also don't really think the drone needs to be in use at all in this segment, because the drone isn't used until this final room, and you just have to press random buttons on the wall, and it just it seemed really dumb and pointless to me. I, I think you could cut that part out, and it would really not change anything about how this game worked. Then with the Opelia one, it feels like it goes on for way too long, and the threat doesn't seem like an actual threat. I say that because Opelia only moves at one speed, but you can speed up or slow down as you like to let Opelia pass you or get past her. And it can be tricky, because you don't slow down to a stop, you just slow down, and she moves really slow. So if you were way too far ahead, there's a good chance you're going to have to restart. And that's the problem. Ban Ban doesn't really feel like a threat during this part because he kind of moves at a snail's pace and he only seems to be able to catch you if you mess up because you have to get to the door first if the door is blue and if the door is pink, Opelia has to get to it and Ban Ban's just always really far behind you no matter how long you're taking which kind of makes sense because Opelia can't really run or anything but it makes it feel less of a threat and something that could have actually been a fun and engaging little segment just feels overly drawn out because again it's down a really long hallway that just it takes too many doors to open before it ends and you never feel like the looming threat of Bam Bam directly behind you because you can look back and see him and he's always so far back the only time he's ever a threat is when you mess up so I think they messed that up honestly something I do have to ask though is why is this segment even here who decided that they'd have so many doors like this in an area that has literally nothing else? And you have to ride the Opelia birds in the right order to be able to get through the doors. Like, it just doesn't really feel like this world or game was thought out. Because why is this here? Who thought this was a good idea? Why is this in a kindergarten? Like, it just... It doesn't make sense, and that's kind of what I was asking myself throughout the majority of it, because games like Poppy's Playtime, everything seems to be a bit more thought out as to why this facility is the way it is. This kindergarten just kind of has areas and segments that all seem kind of disjointed from one another, and I think that's a problem. I really don't think that they actually thought out their world very well. They just kind of set stuff up. The puzzles in this game are not thought out to be interesting, engaging, or anything. It's all just busy work, honestly. Collect the crayons, put them in here, one by one. Collect the buckets, put them in here. Hop on the lights in the order, then hop back. Why? I don't know. Just do it. Hit the buttons with the drone. Hit the buttons with the drone. But this time, you're a jellyfish. I'll get more into that in a second. But more often than not, I was incredibly bored and wanted to do literally anything else. This was not a good game by any stretch of the imagination, and the only reason I can think of as to why people think it's a good game 
is because of Stinger Flint. I will say that I like the Stinger Flint bits, but it feels like it doesn't fit the world. You first meet Stinger Flint in the aquarium section, and he's asleep. You press a button and it activates the cutscene, which is not the only time this happens in this game. There's a couple of different times where you hit key readers and it activates a cutscene. I think that's really poorly thought out. There's probably something you could do to where when they do a certain thing or reach a certain part, uh, the cutscene will automatically play, but uh, that's more of a nitpick. Uh, but when this cutscene starts, Flynn starts awake and Laura dumps on you, saying that he took your kids and that he needs them to be able to escape or something like that. I don't know. He kind of went on for a little bit, but that seemed to be the gist of it. Then he psychically transports you to an island in the middle of nowhere, where he prattles on about how he wishes to be a simple mindless jellyfish out in the ocean again and to feel the sun's rays. It kind of gives him some kind of motivation, but it also feels so weird and like it should be in a different game. We have all these other monsters that were created for some reason in this kindergarten that I guess the government is just cool with, who just kind of eat people. And then there's this psychic jellyfish waxing poetic about why he's doing what he's doing and how he needs the kids to escape, but he never actually says why he needs the kids to escape. And he also doesn't seem to be working with any of the other monsters or share their goals. So it's just disjointed in my opinion. After that cutscene, you wake up as him, and you go around shooting buttons. It doesn't last for too long, you don't really accomplish anything during that time as you're him, and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to imply that you've mind-swapped with him because you're now in a completely different place when you go back to being you, but it also doesn't seem like he really did much either, so I don't really know what this segment was even for. The second time we encounter him, he takes us somewhere in a car with Opelia, Ban Ban, and a little monster guy while Flynn is driving. He's going around in circles in a desert trying to get to a beach while arguing with Ban Ban the whole time before he crashes and you wake up as Flynn again. Admittedly, this would be funny and would probably work in a different game, but the problem is, is that it's Ban Ban. A game with no substance, well yes, that was fairly entertaining. The rest of the game is press button with drone. Collect X number of items. The game got the school part down really well in that aspect. That of course being you're not actually doing anything, the teacher just gave you mindless busy work until the end of the period. If I'm going to take a guess as to why people are saying it's a good game, it would have to be because of the Stinger Flynn parts and the slight jabs it took at itself with Mr. Cabal Man. But that they're in a good game, it does not make. Just because 3% of something was kind of good does not negate the other 97%. The majority of this game is a boring, uninteresting, unengaging slog to get through and it made me want to spend my time doing literally anything else. I know we said it before, but it really just feels like a bad Poppy knockoff that clearly doesn't understand why some people actually liked Poppy. It's very bare bones and basic with the lore and gameplay. It doesn't really have anything going for it. Not the story, not the world building, and not the characters. And I honestly don't think it's going to get any better as time goes on. The creators will probably just find more ways to pad the game out to make it as long as possible without having to add any substance to it. And I honestly doubt they're going to stop and correct course now, especially since people are saying that it's actually good just because they put the smallest of jokes in the segments of an honestly overall boring game. I highly doubt that they're going to stop and put actual thought and care into their game and story. It's just a clear cash grab. It's always been a clear cash grab, and I don't think anyone should play it or pay for it because it's not a game, honestly. This is Busy Work Simulator 2023 Edition. You'd have more fun counting the grains of sand at the playground than you would playing this game. I'm sorry this has been such a negative video, but I honestly thought Garden of Ban Ban 3 was going to have something good about it since so many people were saying that it was a good game. And it's just not. It's really, really not. Our next video will hopefully be more positive though, guys, so look forward to that. And I hope you all are having a good day. We'll see you next time. And right now we are trying to get up to 1,000 subscribers. So if you want to help us out and you really like our content, go ahead and subscribe. We will be talking about more indie horror stuff, more FNAF stuff. So if you like that type of stuff, you should stay tuned because we're going to be making more. <laughs>